there appears to be two systems running side by side, a legal system and a lawful system. Legal represents the dead. Lawful represents the living. The dead have no voice, no justice and no say. The system has us all brainwashed to believe. Acts and statutes are for the people and are the law. They are nothing more than a control system. Man-made rules and regulations for the corporate world. All men and women are born equal. No one is above common law, God's law, universal law, even kings and queens. We were all born free. No one has the right to your body, your property. If any man or woman tries to compel or coerce you into putting something on or in your body, this is a criminal action. When any action is forced upon a living man or living woman by physical compulsion or coercion, this is a criminal act. The government turned you into a corporation when you were born. It was done without your parents' consent and without full disclosure of the facts. Governments gain unlawful control of a person by using implied consent. To the government you are not living, you are a dead entity, a legal fiction. The subject matter in all government acts and statutes always refer to a person. To enable knowledge of what certain words mean in their acts and statutes, they consolidated the Interpretation Act 1889 and other documents into the Interpretation Act 1978 that clearly specifies their definition of certain words. So let's take a look at the word person in that act. Interpretation Act 1978. Schedule 1. Definitions. Person includes a body of persons, corporate or unincorporate. The definition of the word includes means to contain within. Everything else is excluded. So what they are saying is, person can only mean persons corporate or unincorporate. Do you see what they have done, hidden in plain sight? They turned the word person, singular, into persons, plural. Let us understand the meaning of person in the legal system and how it is used to trick us all. Black's Law Dictionary, 11th edition. Person, a human being. Note, at this point, the definition is referring to a single subject matter. Remember the definition of person, a human being, is not plural. Changing the interpretation of person to persons now means it relates to more than one and no longer relates to a human being. It relates to a thing of which there is more than one. So as individuals, we are not persons corporate or persons unincorporate. A human being is not plural. All acts that apply to a person according to their interpretation act do not apply to a human being, but to either a corporation or something of which there is more than one. To refer to a living man or living woman, a human being, as a corporation or more than one thing is to turn that man or woman into a fiction, a non-reality and done so by deception. The interpretation of the word person is the biggest single act of deception in law to date. All governments know this and they get rich from it. Queen Elizabeth II knew this and did nothing. King Charles III knows this and does nothing. If you earn it, they tax it. If you spend it, they tax it. If you save it, they tax it. If you invest in it, they tax it. If you build it, they tax it. If you sell it, they tax it. If you live in it, they tax it. If you drive it, they tax it. If you eat it, they tax it. If you give it away, they tax it. When you die, they tax it. Then they waste it. The corrupt corporation known as the government and its taxation system is like a form of cancer eating away at the very core of our being. Unless challenged, it is presumed by monarchs and governments that you consent to the legal fiction person they attach to you. You consent in many ways to be a legal fiction, a subject with civil rights, duties, benefits, privileges, and obligations like fines and taxes. Implied consent to the slave trade 
is given by you when you vote or register anything with the government, including children, etc. Coronation Oath Act 1688 Every successor to the throne has to swear an oath to the crown. This fact was demonstrated by the illegitimate treasonous monarch, King Charles III. The Will and Mar Act was basically the creation of the current government as we know it today. This was not done by the people, but members of parliament behind closed doors. Great Seal Act, 1688, outlines the fact that all official government and court documents have to have a seal on them. 1706 was the year the trickery and deceit went to the next level. The Union with Scotland Act, 1706, passed by the Parliament of England. The Union with England Act, 1707, passed by the Parliament of Scotland. This unified two kingdoms, England and Scotland. The Kingdom of Great Britain was created 1st of May 1707. It merged the parliaments of England and Scotland. This created a unified Parliament of Great Britain with a single monarch and government. Parliament Act 1911 and Parliament Act 1949. These were created and passed to speed up the process of getting new acts passed. Today, the government used these acts to deceive us by displaying proposed acts on its website, then claim they told the public because it was somewhere on their website. UK Parliament claim on their website, they are sovereign, are the supreme legal authority, can make and end laws, have no constitution, can override their own legislation and can override subjects' rights. UK Parliament can't change something they were not part of, like primary legislation and can't change subjects' rights. The UK Parliament is lying to us all and that is perjury. Their lies are in public view via websites. That makes it conspiracy to defraud. Under the Criminal Justice Act, 1987, Section 12.3, a person guilty of conspiracy to defraud is liable on conviction on indictment to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 10 years or a fine or both. Courts cannot override their own legislation or subjects' rights. If the UK does not have a constitution, then we stand together as living men and living women, using common law principles. The courts have no jurisdiction over a living man or living woman. We the people, the king's subjects, living men and living women, are the supreme authority over the government. The government is not the supreme authority over the people, the king's subjects, living men and living women. King Charles III swore an oath to the crown because he had to follow the Coronation Oath Act, 1688. Confirming primary legislation from founding documents are used today. No one is above the law. All subjects of the king, including living men and living women, have rights. This man knows all about the frauds and crimes being committed against his subjects, yet does nothing to help. A king who lies and deceives his subjects, by default, must be the enemy of his subjects. If anyone in a public office does a wrong, like demands money, issues fines, traffic tickets, etc., to a living man or living woman without their consent, they will be liable for their actions or inactions. On 30th of August, 1889, an act was passed that shows you this fact. Public Bodies Corrupt Practices Act, 1889. Section 1. Corruption in Office, a Misdemeanor. Note. When you read the Act, persons, meaning public bodies like government slash court employees, council workers, police, etc., fall under this Act because they are a corporate body and can be prosecuted in their own legal system. We now know the word person includes a body of persons corporate or unincorporate in their own legislation. This means all living men and living women have no obligation to pay any tax or fine that relates to a person. In the legal system, the fictional law, we are considered to be a person, a fiction, a concept or idea expressed as an all-capital letter name. 
That legal fiction has no consciousness. It is a juristic person, Enslegis. How did this happen? 1540, King Henry VIII claimed all the land in England and set up what can only be described as the first Setwick A.V. Trust. 1666, Setwick A.V. Act 1666 was passed. This was done after the Great Fire of London and declared all living men and women, dead or lost at sea, if they did not come forward within seven years to prove they were alive. Even though it happened in London, it affected the whole of England and stands today. This was the foundation for the dead fiction, the all capital letter name. Let us look at some legislation that only applies to a person, not living men and living women. Taxes Management Act, 1970. The word person is in this document 640 times. It never mentions a living man or a living woman. Local Government Finance Act, 1992. Section 6, Persons Liable to Pay Council Tax, clearly states throughout the whole Act and Section 6, the Act relates to a person. Road Traffic Act, 1988. This Act clearly states person and driver all the way through the Act. Driver relates to commerce, like a taxi driver, bus driver, HGV driver, etc. The Act does state you can have a community license, not a DVLA one. All Acts relate to a person. They force you into their jurisdiction and force you to accept their rules, regulations and punishments. You are given a name, have privileges, benefits and get punished for not following rules and regulations. It is the modern-day slave trade. Black's Law Dictionary, 11th edition. Slave trade, the practice of capturing human beings by force or deception and forcing or selling them into unpaid servitude for life. If any living man or living woman is deceived or forced to accept any government acts without their consent, they are being human trafficked and treated as a slave. Human trafficking is the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of people through force, fraud, coercion or deception, with the aim of exploiting them for profit. 1807. Slavery was abolished in the United Kingdom. You know you are being treated as a slave and being trafficked when anyone tries to attach the word person to a living man or living woman to gain a monetary advantage and forced to have privileges like licenses. This is breaching the Modern Slavery Act, 2015, and the offender can go to jail for life. Every corporate body has to have a slavery policy that can be shown on request or displayed for the public to see. Summary of the facts. Slavery was not abolished, just hidden and extended to deceive all living men and living women. Living men and living women are not a slave, persons, corporate or unincorporate, corporation, resident, owner, driver, legal entity or dead fiction. Tax bills, fines, traffic tickets and state-given privileges relate to a person. A person is legally defined under the Interpretation Act, 1978, as a body of persons corporate or unincorporate and relates to all acts and statutes. They do not apply to a living man or living woman. All judges have to determine subject matter jurisdiction, prove they have the right to hear the case, and understand the definition of the word person as defined in the Interpretation Act, 1978. Governments, councils, courts, police, or any public authority who try to attach or apply person to a living man or living woman who does not consent should be held accountable for binding them into slavery and human trafficking under the Public Bodies Corrupt Practices Act 1889, you can hold them accountable for their actions. If a judge rules in their favour, then the judge is aiding and abetting with them. The judge is depriving you of your right to due process of law. You were born free. You were never meant to be a slave, working day after day for a tyrannical system. Be part of the solution. Protect yourself and your family. 
Declare yourself living and claim ownership of your dead fiction for free. Go online and join the CLC and Croon community today. www.commonlawcourt.com Where fiction ends and reality begins. To enable Common Law Court to help the people, it incurs running costs to provide that help. Every donation goes towards this and is greatly needed and very much appreciated. People donating for the people to make the change. How many people stand at a bar or coffee shop and say do you want a drink? And think nothing of spending around £8 each time. In donating you are contributing towards helping people who are victims of injustices by corrupt tyrannical systems all across this realm. To help and make a donation, please go to www.commonlawcourt.com Knowledge is power. Funk star.